only reason with you Cien Joe people. I think I get it now. In your words, this is called looting a burning house. Ugh, that toxic voice sounds familiar. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? You know what? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways, but straight up snatching IPC cargo? Isn't that going a bit too far? Just as I've said it many times already, once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears, or is it just your brain? I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear. And my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. Keep detaining my cargo, and I'll file a complaint directly with your general. You jerk. Who are you calling a dog? Wait. Why are you here? You're staying on the Sienjo, are you? What terrible luck. Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind. Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yan Ching to the Artisanship Commission? Trouble caused by the IPC? I'd say it's caused by the Skyfaring Commission. Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Ms. Shikwe. What's going on here? <sighs> As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So, you're Scott. I've heard him mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady craftsman? Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the law, fool. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand. But we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some substance that resembles biological tissue. Biological tissue? Does this crate contain living things? I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, According to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with! It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological. It's none of your business. I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulations. <sighs> this Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. I heard how you helped Aram Ali. The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with him before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. What are you guys whispering about over there? Just hurry up and give us back our cargo!
As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But he does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use that against him. Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations, too. According to Article 4 of the Sienjo Alliance IPC trade consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. The Alliance can sign a non-disclosure agreement with you. That way, you won't have to worry about any infringements, right? We can sign a mutually acceptable non-disclosure agreement in accordance with the IPC's rules. Well, uh, that makes sense, but how can we trust you to honor the terms? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives! Can you give us an exact amount, Mr. Scott? If there's any damage after the inspection, the Express, uh, I mean, the Skyfaring Commission will compensate you. The Skyfaring Commission... Yeah, they will compensate you. Provided a detailed report of the damage is submitted. I don't doubt the financial strength of the Skyfaring Commission. However, this is not just about money. Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? According to the principle of territoriality, since your vessel is stranded on the Sienjo, the Skyfaring Commission has the right to inspect it. Indeed. According to Article 27 of the Sienjo Legal Code, all official and private goods upon entering the port shall be subject to inspection. Failure to submit to such inspection shall be deemed equivalent to the possession of unlawful items and shall be subject to legal ramifications. Ah. Huh? My synesthesia beacon must not be working, because I have no idea what you just said. Simply put, if you insist on hindering the inspection, we'll have to treat the cargo as unlawful items and confiscate it. Confiscate it? How, how can you Sanjo people be so unreasonable? If this were pure point, and incoming cargo posed a safety risk, the IPC would take it in for containment and disposal, correct? Uh, th that's true. But the IPC sometimes makes exceptions. For example, they've always given special terms to CN Joe vessels. Well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Fine, I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that uh, I need some time to sort things out. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired? To have well. IPC staff are free to come and go, as long as they don't break any laws. Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingsha, Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Lawfu. Could she be...? Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sienjo Juming. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. It's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Why are you being so nice all of a sudden, hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sure. Why should I object? 
Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Wait a minute! Well, that's more like it. If only the young displayed a more reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want, but I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. According to the import and export regulation signed between the Sienjo and IPC, all biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat, or when all biological activity expires. Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. <laughs> only 47 years? Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades. Have some confidence in yourself. Ha! Typical of a long life species. Your words are dripping with sarcasm. While you may not care about time, I do. I'll be demanding double compensation from the Skyfaring Commission for every minute wasted. Sure thing, Mr. Scott. You seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. Uh, step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Uh, but, Mr. Scott... Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection. And if needed, I can always grovel before the Intelligentsia Guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right? Well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. Just get on with the inspection. Don't act all chummy with me now that you've got your way. This lady is really something else. Is this the IPC product? Uh, -oh. uh listen up! Any damages caused by inspections will be filed with the IPC! <laughs> Turn it off! How unexpected. That was a surprise. Attack. Attack detected. It's still the same one. Armor damaged. Existence is unity. Like fire until everything burns to ashes! <laughs> Nice, like a good my friends. 
Indulge yourselves! I will claim fight to live! Take your positions. Let's improvise. These are abnormal. Step up, let's see ya! <laughs> this is more than a battle. Sex in the sea, so Attack detected. <laughs> the mood is set. Let the show begin! Stay in step. <laughs> Fight to live! Some value, I suppose. Dreams do come true. <laughs> Were you seriously planning to leave this stuff unchecked at the dock for days? That's way too dangerous. I, I had no idea about it. You must have accidentally triggered the cargo's defense program. I don't think trying to shift the blame is a wise choice. But seriously, I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving. I swear on the Amber Lord. Enough. Miss Shikwe, please escort our IPC guest to the Skyfaring Commission. I'm on it. Please follow me, Mr. Scott. Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsmen feared. I can't even tell if it's ingenium or biological in nature. But seriously! I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving! I swear on the Amber Lord! I'm on it. Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsman. The core of this device is what they call wetware in industry slang. To put it simply, this machine operates with a kind of biological nerve as its control center. I'll take some samples for the alchemist to analyze and figure out where the biological tissue comes from. Why would the Intelligentsia Guild use such unethical technology? Perhaps they're trying to create a new weapon? Whatever the reason is, it's probably why the Borison attacked the ship. No wonder the IPC were trying to obstruct our inspection. I'll contact the Ten Lords Commission and ask the judges to come and give their final verdict on this. According to our rules, all prisoners and weapons involving dangerous creatures must be taken to the Shackling Prison for further sentencing. After all, it's the safest place on the Lafu. As for you, Mr. Craftsman, please go with the Cloud Knights and explain the situation to the judge. I had a feeling that the IPC members would cause trouble, but I didn't think they'd be this tricky. Thanks for- I should thank you for saving my life. Your sword skills were impressive. Taking down that big guy. I thought the General's retainers were all burly martial masters. I didn't expect Yenqing to be so... Yeah, exactly. He's young. And talented. As for you, you must be the guests from the Astral Express, right? Saving the Lafu from that crisis. It's so impressive. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. It's still early. So why don't we get some tea at the Alchemy Commission? We can discuss your suggestions for revitalizing the Commission. Uh, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And you three are coming too, right?
Yeah, oh, you're back. Why didn't you say anything at the group chat? I'm on duty. Let's catch up later. Cut it out. I'm carrying out my... Stop hanging around here and find something better to do. Once I'm done in a few days, call up little Gwei and Wawa, and let's grab a meal at Aura Mountain. Goodbye. Please do not hinder me, Carrie. I'm here to pay my respects to the new call. The news is spreading pretty fast. All these years. And the view at the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go. But the ancient sea remains the same. For us, Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here. Listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery... Ah, the view here would be even better without the Emperor... Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sien Zhou have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. In my humble opinion. The rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted when the ancestors of... <laughs> My bad. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, what would you like to discuss, Miss Lingcha? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well... Even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxiao. The Vidyadara and the Alchemy Commission on the Luo Fu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxiao, changing the situation... I may not know about politics, but I do know that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your value. <sighs> While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Thirty years ago, my mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. What? You heard it right. 
The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Alas, why is your face turning pale, Yen? Don't worry about it. I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. Lingxia, you're back! I've been waiting ages for you! Yunli! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Uh, well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to... <sighs> what a small world. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <laughs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. <sighs> Why do I keep bumping into you? Are you stalking me or something? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to... <laughs> now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming. But you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? <laughs> just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just... You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon. Yes? Well, sure. I can give it back to you now, but on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. Fine! You don't have to give it back, because I'll take it back my Between these two, who do you think is tougher? Don't get me wrong. <sighs> Get ready to say- It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine cele- <laughs> Well, since you don't ap- I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed. I've received reports that the delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, it- <clears throat> Clearing out some of- It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Li- Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingsha needs anything, it's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. Ever since the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most of- <sighs> Lingsha. As always. <sighs> it's for your own good, little Yunli. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, are you Ugh. <sighs> Looks like my predecessor. Let me say it again. The one. Be careful when you draw your swords and make sure. Hmm. Can we. <laughs> Nothing How major. Can you block? Uh, the sword is like water. It cannot remain still. Ha! Feeling spiffy? I'll see you off. <laughs> Tedious. Ha! A one time enemy. Ha! Through clouds! 
wields her sword with ease. Shouldn't underestimate her. Stand down. Blade of Moonlight, all will be revealed. In lunar flame. Eternal slip. The dead return! Strike with heart! Did that hurt? Feeling spiffy? Nowhere to run. Let's play. Can you find the answer? <laughs> How many can you block? I won't lose to you when it comes to sword play. Descend to earth. I'll go easy this time. All will be revealed in lunar flame. You chose the wrong enemy. Let's can you find the answer? Over. Swords descend. <laughs> Feeling spiffy? <laughs> Strike the heart. I'll see you off. <laughs> the dead return! <laughs> I win, Miss Yun. You got. Why don't you just give me back my sword, sincerely apologize, and then consider yourself lucky that I'm not interested in your rusty sword? as I don't have the nasty habit of snatching other people's weapons. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with your... <laughs> if you think you can just take this sword from my hand... my young friends. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. Who are you? Me. I'm just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lafu is never short of surprises. However, I have a small suggestion for you. 
Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dance's ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. Hmm. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Hmm, I don't believe it. Aha! What brings you here, Lady Feishao? Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Feishao? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you are... The Merlin's Claw of the Xianzhou Yao Qing? Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Xianzhou Lafu, too. Of course. Everyone has heard of the Great General. Known to all, and unbeknown to none. Great General? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Uh, I don't like it. Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lawfu, so I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The Lacking General. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. Sounds much better, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yenqing and Yunli Shouldn't you politely thank General Feishao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. <laughs> By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. This is how she apologizes? Hmm. <sighs> Now that I finally got my sword back, I should report to the Seat of Divine Foresight. I'll take my leave, General Feishao. Oh, by the way, Miss Lingxia, if you've got some free time, I'd like to invite you to the Seat of Divine Foresight for a chat with General Jingyuan. I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier. Thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise, I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the Healer Lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget, you'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Back already? You've met with Jing Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the Law Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... The influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move, and the Lawfu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. I'd prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. 
I'm just a military healer. And now all of a sudden I'm thrust onto the center stage having cordial chats with two generals? My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing thanks to your translation. <sighs> You've made me lose where I was now. Anyway, this is how I operate in battle, so you might as well- Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Lafu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General, you met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told So not even the famed healer lady could help? Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Sienjo's spearhead, hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I view General Jing Yuan as my enemy. No. My real enemy has always been... Enjoy some tasty food. So, what's for dinner tonight? Jeez, you really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. General who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome. I mean, when Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. And <sighs> mind. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sienjo swordplay. You think so too, right? I agree. General Fei Xiao is... Uh, I was talking about Yenqing, actually. Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up, and I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled swordmasters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all... Generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mind... I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Donhang. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jingyuan wants to invite all of you to the seat of Divine Foresight. He has something important to discuss. 
I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. <sighs> I really don't want to get caught up in grown-up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Huai An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the La Fu before the war dance. Were you shocked just now? Need your extractor cleaned or your star skip? I don't believe in ghosts. Earlier at the Palace of Astrum, I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Huayan. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now, I'd like to officially... These three braved great dangers, accompanying me into perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Fantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Met... Well... I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the Master Diviner Hu Xuin. She's been summoned to the Yuchue for question. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet each went their separate ways, despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Thalassa, rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege, and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the Divine Foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. They haven't. But I've seen enough failures in my time, and I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. So General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? <sighs> no, no. I am too. This old man's words always catch me up. Off guard. The Marshal ordered me to come to this Yenzhou Lafu, but the document only says. Attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. No need for that. You're all important witnesses. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony and understands the situation he is facing. 
She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you, young folk. As for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Fei Shao will be the one asking the questions. Oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift. Yes, it's this case right here. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main event will be the Ringmaster's Challenge. The host will dispatch a skilled warrior to take on challengers from all over the cosmos, showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienjo Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the Ringmaster. <laughs> You humor me, Elder Huayan. The healer lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the ringmaster? <laughs> I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now. But in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands. Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. I've been wondering who would be worthy of such a sword. And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the Ringmaster. So it seems like... Thank you for your generosity. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need... <laughs> You've got confidence, my girl. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yunli. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful... Yeah. And even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, that's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. Oh, not to be rude or anything. We've been watching their drama. I'm... Mm. Quiet down. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. It's not a good look for the Alliance. While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring, which could lead to hard feelings. Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you, but... If you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. How does that make sense? In my humble opinion, while a cloud knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their Cloud Knight flair and prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. 
Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight, so I... Uh, oh, wait! Are you serious, General? Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced swordplay before! I'm a total newbie! You really think I can learn it? Well, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. And that'd be so embarrassing. Isn't this a perfect chance for you? I remember you mentioning that you wanted to learn some sword moves. Yeah, I did say that. But this is all happening so quickly, don't you think? Miss March is like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. The war dance is the perfect opportunity to see what heights- I appreciate your kind words, General Yan. But won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yanqing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? <sighs> That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few uh, uh, uh. Looks like March is curious. <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? How boring would that be? Plus, what really decides a swordsman- So Miss Yunli has already agreed. General, I- I haven't graduated yet. So you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even confident at- Yang Ching, teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's a- I see, General. Now that Yang Ching has agreed too, <sighs> it's up to you. At least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. Hey, I've never missed my target. Then I'm on board. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yunli and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. <laughs> You're too kind. Oh, wait. Uh, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? Aw, uh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world did Yoon Lee and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? Because... General Hua Yan wants... But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Lofu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims, or if we're just some made-up and he wants to see it for himself during the war dance, which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two swordmasters has <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Helder Huayan is still that tricky general who likes to give everyone a headache. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because I wished for you to act as my witnesses. Now I apologize for not disclosing this information earlier. In the coming weeks, I'll also invite all of you to a meeting with General Fei Xiao, where you may need to answer her questions and clear up any doubts she might have. So please, be prepared for the meeting.
Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your birth. Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. The illustrious Merlin's Claw waiting for me? And for so long, too? It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Feichel. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other. Right, Yukong? Yes. Back then, you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights. And I was a pilot of the La Fu's Rainbow Orbit Fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, You'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying. Really does feel like a lifetime ago. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Kachyo? Jiao Cho. He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xian Zhou Yao Qing. Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. That's thanks given my background. I'm happy to have made it the... This I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Law Fu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Although the reports from the Law Fu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded, or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder and a coffin, claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Law Fu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyatara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Law Fu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person, but since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. I understand. I'm sorry. I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but... Well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. 
Hule? You mean that Hule? The Boris in Warhead? The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling prison for over seven centuries? The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but yes, the very same Hule. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yaoqing Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now, of all times? The Foxians in the Alliance made a pact to combat the Abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling Prison, facing unending retribution. Given the situation on the Lawfu, those on the Yaoqing are concerned about Hule's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. That's why I was sent here, to reassure them. <sighs> it's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Huh. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. <sighs> However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. Yu Kung, have you heard of a person named Ron May? Still feeling sleepy. Mm, did I oversleep? Where did March and Don Hung go? First time someone has called me master. I need to uh, get used to it. <clears throat> Let me make it clear. Swordplay training is about improving your body, mind, and strength. It's not a casual game you can master overnight. I promised General Huayan that I teach you Cloud Knight swordplay, so you can participate in the war dance and defeat at least one opponent. I'll do my best. But if you break your master's rules...
fine. A promise is a promise. Since I promised to study hard, I'll do my best starting today. Great! That's the spirit. March is in your hands now, Yen Qing. Don't be too easy on her. Don Hung, do you even have a heart? Did you lose it somewhere? By the way, where's Yun Li? I've found a quiet spot in the back garden of the Palace of Astrum for our first lesson together. Seriously? It's the first day, and you two are already late? Why is everyone on the Lafu so laid back? So disappointing. Uh, uh, Master Yun Li, you're already here. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Oh, wait. Were you trying to teach her in secret? <laughs> That's sneaky. <laughs> I'm just showing you what Lafu etiquette is all about. She might be my apprentice, but it's customary for the master to personally escort their apprentice to the place of learning. As the host, I'll be teaching Miss March the essence of Lawfu swordplay, after which she'll emerge victorious in the war dance ring. You won't be complaining about Lawfu swordplay then. Uh, stand aside, rookie. Let me show you how we Ju Ming swordmasters treat their apprentices. Quickly, over here, Miss March. This is a reverse mentorship gift from me to you. I hope you put it to good use. What's this? Sienjo clothing? Oh, it's so beautiful! Sword practice requires precise movements. This outfit is tailored to fit perfectly and allows for smooth movements. I even added some small accessories. I put a lot of thought into it. You're awesome, Master Yun Li! See? <laughs> See? How can you compete with me? I'll teach March 7th the essence of Ju Ming swordplay so she can win the contest with my sword skills. <laughs> Actually, I've prepared something too. Huh? You have a gift for me too, Master Yen Qing? Since you want to learn swordplay, Miss March, you'll need suitable weapons. So, I went out of my way to prepare a pair of swords overnight. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to ask the craftsmen to customize the swords for you. But I did my best to choose ones that look nice and are suitable for a beginner. I hope you like them, Miss March. Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Yun Li? <laughs> the real competition is just getting started. I'm so lucky to have two great masters. But why does it feel like things are getting a bit weird? So what do you think, masters? Does this outfit suit me? Perfect. I chose it carefully. It's perfect for beautiful young swordswomen like you and me. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, let's get started with the training. The person next to me is a Cloud Knight instructor I've brought in. For your first lesson, try exchanging a couple of moves with him. Uh, wait. We're having actual combat training for the first lesson? Isn't that a bit too intense? Well... I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do is see just how strong your fundamentals are. Come on, step forward and strike with the sword in the most natural way you can think of. It's important for us to grasp your natural movements so we can decide where to start and what you need to learn. If you're ready, let's begin. Uh, <laughs> Hmm. 
when Divine Sword descend. Show your courage. Let's wait. Watch this. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Then I apologize in it. Close attention, Ms. March. Wafu's swordplay is all about being swift and agile in your movements. Blade and flight! <laughs> right on time! This is over! Ignore him. Strength is everything. <laughs> yes, you like this? Ten of you. Well done. Yeah. How many can you block? Strike the park. Uh. <clears throat> right on time. March has quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing Lawfu swordplay. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, that's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Dooming swordplay, 
she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on... Her, her strength. <laughs> Seriously, do you actually know anything about swordplay, or what? I could ask you the same thing. Dual swords require agility. So what's more important than footwork? <laughs> Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Skilled sword masters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. <laughs> you're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? I you claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? Uh, hey, it's only my first lesson, and you're already arguing. Uh, come on, calm down, masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway. So it doesn't matter which one comes first. But it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to, to me, March 7th. Aww.